it rained last night, but it still looks like we got some good moths. This moth is a blotched emerald, and it's the first one we've ever caught. It's a local species, which means it's found in less than 100 sites across the UK, so I'm really pleased. It's called the blotched emerald because it has fawn and cream blotches on the corner of the wings, as well as a emerald green background that really stands out. Such a beautiful moth. This is one of the interesting moths we caught today, Cypress Carpet. It doesn't look like much, but it's an uncommon moth. And added to that, its food plant is an alien. No, not from Jupiter or Mars. It's an alien conifer, Cypress. In natural history, an alien is an organism that's been introduced from somewhere else. For instance, a rabbit is an alien because, believe it or not, it was introduced by the Romans as food and game. Oh whoops, a twig must have fallen into a moth trap last night. It was quite windy and rainy. Or is it a twig? Maybe it's a moth. It is quite flexible and soft. It's a moth. More specifically, a buff tip moth. I wasn't thinking that we were going to catch this moth, and it's quite late into its flight season. But isn't it such well camouflaged? It looks exactly like a twig. It's even fooled some people in the past. Not me. The buff ermine can have different wing patterns, but this is its most common. The wings can also be entirely black, which is really rare in the wild, but instead of the yellow shown here, it can also be white. These are both free band waves. The first one is the non-banded form, but the second is the banded form. It's the most common species we caught last night, but not much to look at compared to some of the other moths we caught. The buff arches must be the most beautiful moth I've ever caught. It has just intricate detail with flint-like quality on the forewings. Etched with white and orange-brown arches at the bottom of the wings. Amazing. This, I think, is a willow beauty. I think this because its antennae are mostly hidden behind the forewing. Unlike the great oak beauty, which I think I have caught today, and is quite a rare moth, this one, although, is common. We caught one of these today, the great oak beauty. It's my first ever nationally scarce moth, which I'm really pleased with. Nationally scarce moths come in two types, the nationally scarce A, and a nationally scarce B. The nationally scarce A is found in less than 30 sites across the UK, but I'd be very lucky to have that. So this one's a nationally scarce B, which is found in less than 100 sites across the UK, which is still very good. This, for a change, is a micro moth. The garden grass for there, and it's not that small. It's easily disturbed by day and I'll guarantee you'll find it this summer. This is a yellow tail, and you can see why it's called that, can't you? And don't worry, it's not dead, it's just playing dead. Coupled with its yellow tail, it probably think it has an immense defence mechanism. We found a caterpillar of this moth early on in the year on our rhododendron. Maybe it's the same moth, we'll never know. This is the green silver lines, and quite a faded individual. If it was a bit fresher, you'll be, you'll be able to see a red border around the forewing, which isn't visible in its scarcer cousin, the scarce silver lines. Also, the scarce silver lines only has two bars across the forewing, whereas the green silver lines, as you can see here, has three. <laughs> 